Thank you, Charlie. I would like now to introduce Carl Benson Molina from the Philippines, where he is attending the University of Philippines Diliman and studying family life and child development with the intention of becoming a preschool teacher, a very good male role model in an area where there are so many women often. Carl, uh, Carl's really formative experience happened last year when he spent three months in Malaysia as an exchange participant with ISEC International, being a volunteer teacher in an orphanage uh, where he was teaching children between the ages of five and young people to 17 uh, in a place which was a couple of hours from Kuala Lumpur. That's where he realized how important it is to address development challenges. And once he went back to the Philippines, he said, yes, but if I did it in Malaysia, why don't I do it here in my own country? That's why he became involved with two different uh, institution, the HECARE Foundation and the Reception and Study Center for Children, in both of which he's still continuing his activity as a volunteer teacher. So please um, welcome Charles Benson Molina. Yes. Distinguished uh, counselors, my fellow delegates from different parts of the world, the Wan Young World Team, a pleasant afternoon. It is my great pleasure and honor to speak in front of you and represent my country, the Philippines. Yesterday, the summit was graced by Hugh Evans, founder of the Global Poverty Project, and his team to talk about one of the most pressing issues that needs to be addressed by the world today, which is extreme poverty. When the subject of poverty is raised for discussions and given paramount attention, it is really impossible not to talk about hunger and malnutrition, which take the real form and glaring illustration of poverty. Allow me to, look, to talk about the present conditions in my country, wherein a significant number of Filipinos has to face an everyday ordeal of hunger and scarcity of food available to each household. In 2003, official estimates show that about 10 out of 100 families and 14 of 100 individuals were food poor. Even more alarming is that 25% of children aged zero to five years old suffer from current malnutrition. 26% of this population has chronic malnutrition, and 4% is acutely malnourished. With a little math, we can see that 55% of these children is suffering various degrees of malnutrition, and in a span of six years, this figure has steadily and rapidly increased. It is quite surprising to see such a deplorable state of living when we consider the fact that the Philippines is a country which is highly agricultural and endowed with natural, rich natural resources. In other words, when we examine it closely, we can conclude that hunger and malnutrition cannot be solely attributed to the fact of lack of food, but also due to the high price of the commodity. As a matter of fact, according to the World Speaks 2010, a major survey from BBC Global News a staggering 86% of Filipinos consider rising costs of food as a very serious problem, therefore making it inaccessible to the entire population. I fundamentally believe that all of us here have a pretty good grasp of what hunger is. But every nation in the world stricken, in, stricken by extreme poverty has its own stories to tell to better describe the menacing conditions they have to live with. In this regard, let me tell you stories and describe multiple images of many poor Filipinos and the situations they have to go through in order to survive every single day of their lives. In my country, some people have to scavenge leftover food from garbage bins and, uh, and feed on them. 
you may probably think that there is nothing novel with people's, uh, poor people scavenging food to survive. But what if I tell you that some of these people not only scavenge food in order to feed and nourish themselves, but also sell them to small-scale diners and restaurants, which in turn get served to unsuspecting customers. These people may or may have not recognized the hazards of eating food literally has been put in trash, classified as unfit for consumption, and ready to be disposed. This practice, though identified, seemed to be ignored in the Philippines. Unfortunately, they fell victims to a system that takes away their most basic right for having access to safe food for survival. In 2007, a 12-year-old girl from the southern part of the Philippines committed suicide due to extreme hunger being ex experienced by her whole family. This girl has left a diary revealing her intense yet resigned feelings about her family's lot. This has created a massive outrage from different groups of Filipinos who call for, uh, for the better provision of basic social services to its people. Shortly after that incident, the president has formed an anti-hunger task force and released one billion pesos for various anti-hunger um, projects by various task force members. This little girl's deplorable situation is such a grim illustration of the colossal reality of hunger, not only in the Philippines, but in many parts of the world. Indeed, hunger is not only a problem in itself, but also brings a multitude of other setback to people and this little girl by ending her life out of her despair, sheer despair, represents the greater population of people which have been dehumanized in the starkest way possible. My fellow delegates, hunger is more than having an empty stomach. As a pre preschool teacher in the Philippines, I know for a fact that hungry children are less likely to perform well in class, or even so, less likely to go to school. Having said that, hunger now becomes an impediment for children to improve and achieve their full potential. Pardon me if I am now talking about education, but I most certainly believe that education is intricately woven with hunger and poverty. So intricate that hunger can actually identify the trajectory of a nation. When children are not fed well and malnourished, we cannot expect optimum and holistic development, covering every domain such as the physical, cognitive, and social emotional aspects, and consequently, in the long run, they become less productive citizens. Let us note that children are the hope of every nation. Just like every one of us here, we are the hope of our generation and have a significant role to play in our society. But it is important to note, however, that being the hope of our generation means having to take a greater initiative to address issues which continuously affect millions of people in ways unimaginable. We cannot turn a blind eye anymore. Only somebody with a callous heart can sit down and do nothing despite the truth that every six seconds, a child die because of extreme hunger. And it is for this foremost reason that businesses, organizations, governments, and civil societies must work together more effectively to prioritize spreading information and providing access to good health care and nutrition. Hence, businesses should be called upon to take a vigorous involvement in an effort to eradicate hunger and malnutrition. Corporate social responsibility must be taken seriously and should be placed at the core of every existing business, large or small. What businesses can do is support these families, not only by providing them with short-term aid, but also by allowing them to explore their potentials and be given the means to stand on their own. As what Professor Muhammad Yunus said yesterday, people, poor people are not given the opportunity to grow. They are like bonsai seeds that did not have enough space to grow. 
If only we give them that single chance that they deserve, I am most definitely sure that we can see a dramatic decrease in the number of people facing hunger. Likewise, food should be accessible to everyone, and there should be an intense call upon the government and businesses to work together in an, in an effort to make food accessible to everyone. It may be very idealistic, you may say, or others may think it is a long shot, most especially for countries or societies like the Philippines, which has a long history, almost like a culture of corruption and inefficient bureaucracy. Further, I would like to quote Professor Yunus, money making is only a part of us, not the whole of us. We should endeavor to elicit collective responsibility among governments, businesses, and citizens. And by so doing, we can make hunger and malnutrition a thing of the past. Lastly, I would like to urge you, my fellow delegates, to mobilize yourselves in doing small actions. Some of you may undermine the importance of small actions, but it is not always about money or the use of power to drastically impose change. Volunteer and be involved in charity work or use your passion for the greater benefit of everyone. It is my belief that even if we may not be able to change the world on a grand scale, we can most certainly make a difference one small deed at a time. Thank you for listening.